Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, as well as the next one or two videos, we're going to show you the purpose and the usefulness of that standard score Z. We should we familiarize ourselves with the standard uh, way of looking at the normal distribution. And when we talk about plus or minus one sigma, plus or minus two sigma, or plus or minus three sigma. So here we have the three normal distribution curves. And notice that at the very top, in the middle here, we consider that the mean. If we have a normal distribution, both sides of the distribution will look exactly the same, and at the peak, we'll have the mean value on the horizontal axis. Now notice, if we go one sigma above the mean, or one sigma below the mean, that means that z equals one on this side, and of course on the other side, we have z equals negative one. If we then take z equals 1 and we plug that into the table that we saw in the previous video, then we get the value of 0.34134 or 34.134%, which means that 34.134% of all the values randomly picked out of a distribution will fall between the mean and plus 1 sigma above the mean. 1 sigma, well, it depends what that means here. Let's say that the mean is 100 and sigma is 10. That would mean that all the values between 100 and 110, those values will represent 34.134% of all the values on the curve. If we go to both sides, we go minus 1 sigma to the mean, and from the mean to plus 1 sigma, we simply double that number, twice 34.134 is essentially 68.3% of all the values will lie between negative minus one sigma and plus one sigma away from the mean. If we now expand that and we go to plus or minus two sigma, two sigma above the mean and two sigma below the mean, at this point z equals two and this point z equals negative two. Essentially it's the same number just with a negative sign. And we can see that 47.725% of all the values in the distribution will fall between the mean and two sigma above the mean. And of course, if we go to both sides, negative two sigma to positive two sigma, we double that number, and 95.45% of all the values will fall between plus or minus two sigma. That's for a standard score value z equals two. And if we push it one more sigma out, we go plus or minus three sigma. Notice that almost half, not quite, 49.865% of all the values will fall between the mean and three times on the mean and three sigma above the mean. That will contain almost half the values. And if you go to the other side, minus three sigma, then of course you have 99.7% of all the values will fall between those two limits. Of course, this point is z equals negative three. So again, we can find that by taking z equals one, z equals two, z equals three, and going to the table and pulling out that particular value. Or what we also can do with it is, for example, let's say we want to know the area need to curve, but in this case, we want to find it between the mean and when the value equals 114.2. Also notice that we took the standard deviation to be 10. So if the first thing we need to do is find the z value, so in this case, the z value, would be equal to the number of interest, which is 114.2 minus the mean, which is 100, divided by the standard deviation, in this case 10. So this becomes 14.2 divided by 10, and that gives us 1.42. So that's the z value. And again, we would take that z value, go to the table, pluck out the correct number, and that would represent all the values between the, the mean and 1.14 or 1.42 times the mean, uh, let me pull that back. Okay, so we're looking for all the values between the mean and 1.42 times sigma or the standard deviation above the mean, and that would be, hmm, let's say here, 1.42, for one it's about 34%, for two it's about 47%, so we're looking at probably about I'd say 40, 41% of all the values would fall in here. How do we find that? We simply would go to a table. Of course, you need to have a table handy, and most textbooks will have a table like that. So let me put on my glasses. I can see the small little letters here. 1.42, that gives me 42.22% of the value. So I'm not too far off in my guess, 42.22% 
of all the values in the random distribution would fall between the mean and 1.42 times sigma or the standard deviation above the mean. And that is how we use the standard score, at least some of the uses of the standard score in the standard uh, or the normal distribution curve. And that is how it's done.